Resurrection Sunday is coming. Resurrection Sunday is coming. Hey, hey, Resurrection Sunday is coming. You hear it. Resurrection Sunday is coming. And we're excited about it. It really doesn't matter where you worship. You can worship in Decatur with the Robinsons. Yes. Honey, you better get ready. I'm ready. 11 a.m. Resurrection Sunday. Or you can do it this way. Listen, we are going to be in New Orleans at Greater St. Stephen. You know, we're one church in two states. Right. So listen, whether you're in Decatur, Atlanta, or New Orleans, uh -huh. you need to be a part yes. of what's getting ready to happen. And guess what? I'm going to be preaching in New Orleans. I'm preaching a long time in New Orleans for Resurrection wow. Sunday. We're going to have a time. A and time. I'm going to be preaching for my first time in Decatur Woo, yes. at the Changing a Generation Church. Resurrection it, Sunday is coming. It's coming. It's coming. You better be there. We'll get to see you real soon. Peace. Resurrection Sunday 2023. One church in two states. Sunday, April 9th with Dr. T. Delbert and First Lady Jasmine Robinson and Overseers Bishop Paul S. and Dr. Deborah B. Morton. Changing a Generation Decatur at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and Greater St. Stephen, New Orleans at 10.30 a.m. Central Time. Resurrection Sunday, April 9th. One church in two states. Decatur, cagnow.org and New Orleans, houseofgreater.org Coming up on Greater Change Ministries. I'm a witness when you get higher in him, everything about you will go higher. You want your job to go higher? <laughs> get higher in the Lord. You want to get hired again? I'm saying, watch it here. I did not say H-I-G-H-E-R. I said H I. R E D. You want to get hired? Go higher in Jesus. Somebody in the room, you've been struggling with unemployment. You've been struggling. You've been struggling with employment, yet feeling like you're unemployed because you don't like what you do. But when you get the right attitude, I'm a witness that the Lord will put an anointing upon you. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. From Changing a Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church in Decatur, Georgia, and Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana, one church in two states, pastored by Dr. T. Delbert Robinson, along with Elder Jasmine M. Robinson, and Overseers Bishop Paul S. Morton and Dr. Deborah B. Morton welcomes you to the Greater Change Outreach Ministry. Now, prepare for a life-changing experience. Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Greater Change Telecast. I'm your host, Dr. T. Delbert Robinson. The Lord has been moving in his holy sanctuary, and I want to take you into a moment in God at the Greater St. Stephen Church of New Orleans, Louisiana, in the east where the word of the Lord came to us and said, it's good for us to be here. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going through, but I want to decree and declare angels are here. Greater and change, greater change is here. And the word of the Lord says, it's good for us to be right here. Let's go in and see what God has for us, and I'll be back after this. It's good for us to be here. It's Matthew chapter 17, only verse number 4. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us. To be here. Ushers, you may be seated. 
crowd and congregation, that's all I got for you. I want to talk about it's good for us to be here. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor. I'm going to say it strong like it's the top of the 90s. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Tell them greater is here. Angels are here. And it's good for us to be here. Wow. Now, when I saw that in the text, it didn't jump out at me right away. But I really want to hone in on the hereness. It's not a word that just felt good. The hereness that Peter leaned into. And the Holy Ghost alerted my eyes. You've already confessed it to see that the same hereness that Peter raises up is applicable to greater St. Stephen. How so? Because the Lord told me last year, he said, don't wait for anything else. He said, do, the, in fact, when I was in prayer about this, the Holy Ghost said, do all you can to start wording your mouth to stop telling people I'm on the way to do something. He said, start telling the people it's already done. That whatever it is that you are expecting from God, by faith and through grace, start decreeing over yourself, it's already here. I say, Lord, I, I, I got it. I got it. He says, son, tell the people greater is here. Greater ain't on the way, it's here. And then, then earlier in this year, as the year, how many of y'all remember? I mean, because we're already well into the year, but 2023 started off a little crazy from day number one. And, the, and, and I said, now, Lord, what is this? He said, son, don't miss what I am doing. He said that I have already... I have already supplied a degree of angels. I can't leave you without reminding you that not only is greater here, and the reason you're going to see the angels that are present, that are ever present, pulling you through, protecting you, keeping you in all of your ways, said the psalmist, is because angels are here. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Then the prophet comes and tells us, and we're standing in a new era. Wait a minute, something is happening. I need about 70 ridiculous folk in the room that can holler out, it's good for us to be here. All three synoptics keep saying that Peter says it is good for us to be here. Greater is here. Hallelujah to God. Angels are here. And on top of all of that, it's good. It's a good thing. I don't know. This is cliche, but I just feel like saying you're in the right place at the right time for the right reason, for the right season in your life. It may be all bad, but I want to, I just got to serve notice on somebody. It's cliche. Weeping may endure for a night. And if you're still weeping, I want to announce to you, as oxymoronic as it sounds, it's good for us to be here. Peter and I, we have to have a conversation with this. And I have to let you eavesdrop in on the conversation. Peter, James, and John up on this high mountain with Jesus. What is it, Pete, that causes you to say it's good for us to be here? Without reading all three of the synoptics, can I point out three assertions that are different in each synoptic? Number one, Peter said back to him, he said, Tyrant, because a lot of y'all don't know my name is Tyrant. He said, Tyrant, we saw some things. Up on the mountain that you can't see on level ground. 
He said, you got to pause parenthetically and peruse the perimeter of the passage in which you are preaching and tell the people that if you want to see a different glimpse of Jesus, you're going to have to go higher in God. He says, first of all, show them that if you look at the Matthew account, the narrative of Matthew, chapter 17, note taker, verse number two, the King James Version says, his face did shine as the sun. Point number one, they saw a shining face. They have been walking with Jesus all this time. But his face looked a little different up on the mountain of transfiguration. You know, every now and then, and y'all know I'm really, really, really into this lady named Jasmine. <laughs> Making love makes sense is over. Okay. Sometimes I look at her and I just see Jay. Sometimes I look at her and I see the preacher, Elder Jasmine. But every blue moon, I'll get stuck in a stare. She's blushing right now. Where God does something with her face that takes me back to a place where the late prophet Prince Rogers Nelson said uh -uh, from the first moment I saw you <laughs> it's just her face I told y'all y'all was eavesdropping start shining to me in a way that may not make sense to you Peter said tell the people when we were up on that mountain we saw Jesus' face outshine the sun. Maybe that's why the old church hymnologist said there's a lily in the valley and it's bright as the morning sun. He said not only, not only Tyron did we see a shining face but we also saw a snow white fullness. Snow white fullness. What do you mean? Well you got to go to Mark. Catch it? No taker. We're in the synoptics so you got to go to Mark chapter 9 at verse number 3 because in the King James version Mark chapter 9 verse number 3 said and his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow watch the wording here as no other or as no fuller on earth than can white them in other words I'm not sure what y'all use in New Orleans yet, but we use the thing in California because my mama is from Alabama, a thing called Clorox. We didn't just use Clorox for one thing. It looked like we used Clorox for everything. Hey, boy, run up to the store and get me some Clorox. And I'm like, what do we need Clorox for now? Because the bathtub got to be white. The sink got to be white. And when you mess over some clothes, your clothes got to come out white. And the Bible is saying that Mark said, I don't know what kind of agent or solvent they were using in that season. But whatever it is, Mark said it was nothing any whiter on earth than the snow white fullness that they saw on Jesus' garment. See, down, down in the regular land. Jesus is walking through dusty streets. But when he gets up on the mountain, that dust is now dominated. I wish I had somebody here. By the purity of who he is, that he is pure from the inside out. There's nothing brighter than being able to see Jesus in a lofty place. Mark is trying to show us he looks different when you go higher in God I'm trying to help somebody I'm trying to motivate somebody that he is not just a blonde haired blue eyed Jesus but when you go higher in him he looks a little bit different Mark said it exceeded 
Not only does it exceed what Clorox can do, but don't leave this. It exceeded the whiteness in snow. Snow white fullness. And I just believe that whatever Jesus did, it is possible to be done in your life. That as you go higher in God, that your look, I'm getting ready to help somebody here. Your look will change. In fact, I want to prophesy to somebody way over yonder here that your raiment, your clothes, your wardrobe is going through an upgrade right now. I, I'm not preaching you into Gucci. I'm not preaching you into Louis Vuitton. I'm not preaching you into Fendi. I'm not talking about your fashionability. I'm talking about the fullness of your faith. Your look is changing. Will you look at somebody and tell them you're changing before my very eyes. The you that I used to see, I'm not looking to see them anymore. Because if you will consent to go higher in Jesus, you're going to find out he'll clean you up. He'll clean you up. He'll whiten your clothes. Not only will he clean your clothes, he'll clean your attitude. And you do know the reason you get to go higher in you is the more you allow him to clean your attitude, attitude will determine your altitude. You ain't going to be able to go up that high in Jesus and have a terrible attitude. You can't be rude to everybody just because that's who I am. Tell your neighbor, stop being like that. If you want to go higher in Jesus. Whew. I'm a witness when you get higher in him, everything about you will go higher. You want your job to go higher? <laughs> get higher in the Lord. You want to get hired again? I'm saying, watch it here. I did not say H-I-G-H-E-R. I said H-I-R-E-D. You want to get hired? Go higher in Jesus. Somebody in the room, you've been struggling with unemployment. You've been struggling. You've been struggling with employment, yet feeling like you're unemployed because you don't like what you do. But when you get the right attitude, I'm a witness that the Lord will put an anointing upon you. Well, he'll put you in a place where you're not working harder, but you're going to start working I wish I had some smart workers in the room. Somebody that can say, Lord, I need a shift in employment. That just says, go higher in him. I know it's elementary, but for somebody, it's about to work. Nudge your neighbor and tell them it's about to work. In fact, look behind you. Somebody behind you, they need some encouragement. I'm just a believer in this season that if you work the word, the word will work. I'm not talking about no Bible verses. I'm talking about Jesus himself that in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. If you know how and you learn how to maneuver Jesus into every area of your life, he'll promote you before you get promoted. Have you walking around like you the boss? You ain't getting paid like the boss yet, but I'm prophesying it's on the way. I wish I had somebody, if you really need it and you ain't ashamed, that can hop up and turn around and sit back down and say, Lord, I thank you, it's on the way. I'm going higher because it's on the way. Changing my attitude because it's on the way. Stop dressing like that when you go to work. Dress like you're going to the next level. Uh, when I was coming up, they called it dress for success. Change your wardrobe. I wish I had some young people in here that I could say, pull up your pants. Uh, get turn around in your spirit. Put down your joint. Put down your liquor bottle. I'm dressing for success. I'm going to another level in here. A snow white fullness y'all be seated it makes me nervous I gotta run here Pete says Pete said Matthew saw it one way Tyron Matt saw it one way Mark saw it another way he said but I'm leaving you here he said but Luke in Luke chapter 9 verse 29 Luke saw it the way you see it most times Tyron I said how is that he said 
Luke saw a shifted fashion. A shifted fashion. Yeah, because the text said, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance began to alter. I want to impart this and I got to get out of here. Somebody shout out, as he prayed, things began to shift. This is why every day of my life, I have to find a way to get into the place of prayer. Because the text said that as he prayed, his countenance was altered. You know, the first time I, I remember this, it was in California, uh, when as an unmarried man, because I was a pastor, I was praying and I had to spend a lot of time in prayer to master and navigate my pastorate. And when I got married, I had developed such a habit of praying in private that I would literally have to wait until Lady J left the house so that I could get into the posture of prayer. Well, one day she left and she came back a little bit quicker than I expected her to. She walked into the house and she said, what is going on in here? And I'm trying to play it off. I'm wiping my, what you mean, honey? She said, it feels like you've been praying in here. And after that, I thought about it. No greater compliment can a wife give a husband than to say it just feels like. Not I heard you. It feels like you've been in prayer in here. And from that day forward, I tried to do and make it my best to be able to boast on God that when I pray, my wife don't hear me. She feels the countenance. Have you ever prayed until your countenance got better? I want to encourage somebody and I got to get out of here and find somebody who says I've been depressed and I prayed until my countenance changed. I've got bad news, but I prayed until my countenance changed. When you look around the room and tell them prayer still works, come on, tell somebody prayer still works. I ain't done with you yet. Greater is here because prayer still works. Angels are here because prayer still works. And it's good for us to be here. Peter's about done with me now. He said, that's all you got to tell him. Tell him we saw his face start shining. We saw the snow white fullness on him. But we felt the shifted fashion that when he got through praying, whatever was on his mind, it began to change. Can you nudge your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, tell them, don't stop praying. In fact, I need about those same 70 people that can tell somebody to shift toward everybody praying. I need somebody that can help me just touch your neighbor and tell them, I'm praying for you. Tell them, will you pray for me? Don't stop praying greater. It's good for us to be here. If everybody in this room was a prayer warrior just like me, the question is, what kind of church would my church be? It would be a church of prayer that prays until the shifting of countenance takes place in our midst. I wish I had somebody. Yes, sir, that's the sound that could turn around and say, Lord, I thank you. It's turning around. It's turning around every time that I look up when I pray. I get great consolation. My countenance shifts. My attitude goes higher. How many of you say, I'm going to pray until I can't stop praying. Well, look at somebody and tell them, don't stop. Tell them, don't stop. Pray it, pray it. Don't stop. Ooh, the power of God 
that was in that room is manifesting on this telecast right now. It's good for us to be here. That's what Peter said. He woke up out of his sleep and he saw the countenance of Jesus changing. I want to decree and declare. I want to prophesy to you right now that your circumstance is changing right where you are. Don't sleep on the move of God. You may miss everything that he has for you. I want to pray with you and pray for you. Prayer is so important that you would stay awake, that you would stay alert. And as the man of God, I'm sounding the alarm that it's good for you to be here. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your beloved as they watch even now that you would alert them to be able to see, to open their spiritual eyes and see that it is more working for them than against them and it is good for them to be here and we give you praise we give you honor and glory for it now by the strong name of Jesus I pray amen and thank God now listen there's a telephone number on the screen and we have operators that are on standby right now they know how to pray with you and pray with you from your there until you get here because it is good for you to be here and we thank God for you listen I'm out of text I'm out of talk I'm out of time I gotta go and you gotta go as well but we'll be right back here same time same channel keep it locked and in the meantime in the meantime and in between time do everything in your power to make it a greater change God bless bye for now Resurrection Sunday is coming. Resurrection Sunday is coming. Hey, hey, Resurrection Sunday is coming. You hear it. Resurrection Sunday is coming. And we're excited about it. It really doesn't matter where you worship. You can worship in Decatur with the Robinsons. Yes. Honey, you better get ready. I'm ready. 11 a.m. Resurrection Sunday. Or you can do it this way. Listen, we are going to be in New Orleans at Greater St. Stephen. You know, we're one church in two states. Right. So listen, whether you're in Decatur, Atlanta, or uh -huh. New Orleans, uh -huh. you need to be a part yes. of what's getting ready to happen. And guess what? I'm going to be preaching in New Orleans. I'm preaching a long time in New Orleans Ooh. for Resurrection wow. Sunday. We're going to have a time. A and time. I'm going to be preaching for my first time in Decatur yes. at the Changing a Generation Church. Resurrection it's Sunday is coming. It's coming. It's coming. You better be there. We'll get to see you real soon. <laughs> Peace. Resurrection Sunday 2023. One church in two states. Sunday, April 9th with Dr. T. Delbert and First Lady Jasmine Robinson and Overseers Bishop Paul S. and Dr. Deborah B. Morton. Changing a Generation Decatur at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and Greater St. Stephen, New Orleans at 10.30 a.m. Central Time. Resurrection Sunday, April 9th. One church in two states. Decatur, cagnow.org and New Orleans, houseofgreater.org. Thank you.